Hey guys and girls, welcome back to another beautiful video on this beautiful channel on this beautiful, beautiful day. Hope you're doing great, all you beautiful people. Please check out the description box for all the nice links, all those nice, nice thingies you can get down there, all the nice informations. Also drop a like, subscribe if you like the content. Uh, last video we talked about the, uh, we worked with the selector rectangle, basically just a simple little rectangle that you can move around. But right now it's moving with the mouse position. Now we want it to move uh, using a grid type movement and since we're really dividing everything up into files and making sure everything is structured properly I think we should add a new little vector uh, to F here called mouse pos grid okay and it will tell us at which grid position the we'll call it a 2u, which grid position the mouse is at. So this will depend on the grid size. Now, one thing that we can be 100% sure of is that when we create a state, we're 100% sure there is a grid size variable set for us. All right, that's why we force the game engine to give us a grid size from start. So we can use that in every aspect of the game from the very beginning. So we don't have to worry that there might not be a grid size or something. You can worry that the programmer uh, puts a negative grid size in there and it's just gonna crash the whole thing, but you gotta be smart, right? So it shouldn't be able to be negative. Anyway, let's go into the update mouse position. So here is where we update all our beautiful mouse positions. This mouse post grid is not gonna be any different. All right, it's not nothing different. We're just gonna go this mouse post uh, view we're just going to use the view mouse position and now it's going to complain because it's not a vector to to you but what i'm going to do is i'm going to do this sf vector to you and we're going to do a couple of castings here okay we're just going to statically cast some stuff now this might look nasty okay and really really might look nasty but don't worry about it uh static cast unsigned all right this makes sure that we don't use a lot of overhead in updating these all the time it's just going to statically cast it for us directly without any bigger issues so this is going to be the uh there we go the y and the x so we're just gonna statically cast this but we gotta do something here we gotta do uh a integer division so this is going to be that and then we're going to divide it with another unsigned variable which is going to be the grid size so depending on or we should we should actually let's see uh so 50 otherwise it's going to be zero and then it's, it's going to be all used with integer division so static cast unsigned uh, this grid size so using the grid size we can kind of statically cast all this crap and then we'll have a mouse position grid updating all the time okay and that's gonna make sure that we can use whoops what did I do we can use this uh, as a position now yeah that should that shouldn't be a problem um, if we go ahead and just look at we would want this as a float though that is what kind of bugs me but if we do a floating point division we could cast it to unsign everything but you know what we'll we'll just play around we'll look at the warnings later we'll figure that out uh anyway let's go back to where we set the position in editor state.cpp where we set the position for um the selector rectangle so this mouse post grid let's just use that dot x mouse post grid dot y so pretty much that's what we're going to do like this and then we want to multiply this by the grid size so it's going to set the position in this kind of a you know when the mouse moves over it's going to be one you know it's, it's going to be a little more um, snappy to the grid uh, this state data grid size 
and we're gonna see if the multiplication is wrong i'm pretty sure it is wrong but we will see we will see we'll, we'll play around with that until it's correct um settings no not settings no editor yeah see how it is very snappy now see that it's more of a grid type thing now see how it's kind of exactly following all of this crap see that see that see that you see that guys oh my god yes very beautiful yes very very beautiful now i would like this to be a hundred though the grid size not 50 because 50 is a little too small for me at this resolution so what i'm gonna do very very easily this is a good time to show you guys how you can just quickly change your game engines grid size all you have to do is just put a hundred in here and you just run this game and hopefully it will automatically switch everything to a hundred hundred so editor see the grid sizes became a hundred now we can have bigger tiles and a more zoomed in type view with more pixels so the detail is going to be higher and we'll have bigger tiles now a lot of games from old ages and, and still now use something called um, I don't know if it's called this, but it kind of meld together larger tiles and make even larger tiles out of them. And you can't really see that when you're playing the game, but that really helps out with performance. So you might have a big ass tile like that, uh, and you just have a kind of like five, six tiles up in the screen. Um, so that, that could be something we'll do. I don't really know how that works just yet, 100%. I just know the theory somehow behind that but still doesn't matter so we got this beautiful little thingy uh, that we can move around now and the tile map if we go back to that it just adds a default green type thing green tile so let's just close everything else just so we don't get confused let's have the tile map editor state and tile open because that's probably what we're going to be working with here's the green okay so i'm just going to do color white so we just have white blocks and this shape dot set outline let's just see outline thickness i don't know why it's doing that outline thickness one float this shape dot set outline color black let's just do black so we'll want to see that later on within the tiles but let's not waste time and start the program again let's just go into our tile map and let's see what we're gonna do so we're gonna need to add some tiles to this tile map all right and this grid position wherever the mouse is will dictate at what position we're putting this um we're putting this uh what do you call it the tile basically okay and we're gonna have a big map full of null pointers basically uh, without a lot of these tiles in them they're just gonna be empty because we have a what do we have ve vector vector of a tile and then we have a layer which in turn holds that tile so we're just default pushing back all this stuff then what we're gonna need in order for this to work is going to be a tile pointer right here so if it's a null pointer we will know then we don't have to do anything with that position in the in the map okay so that's gonna change a bunch of stuff for us we're gonna keep working on this in the next video probably um, tile pointer just make sure you go in here and just switch all of these to tile pointer here and push back new new tile just like that and we're gonna have to z point render or that thing you render and then we need to remove all the tiles right here so we're gonna have to go ahead uh, copy all of this put it in here so we're gonna go through the x and the max size for y. I'm not going to do any of this. And then move that. And then x, y. Instead of push back, we're just going to do delete this map x, y. Um, 
x y z right so there we go at the at that position we're just going to delete all of those and that is going to yeah that's going to help us just clear everything out and this will make sure uh we can we can have null pointers in there so what i could do is i could just do push back a null pointer see i could just do that and then what's going to happen is that um or if I do push back tile null pointer, let's see, it resizes it. What I could do is Z Yeah, we'll we'll look into that. I don't think you push back null pointer. I'm not I'm not sure about that. It does resize, it reserves some stuff. And then we just add stuff to it yeah pretty sure we'll we'll look into that i'll try this out we'll see um there you go what you want to do before we end the video anyway i'll look into it i'm sorry about being slow here but what you can do is just this uh, if z if uh, tile reference right let's do a pointer so if that's not a null pointer just to make it clear all right if that's not a null pointer we'll render it so hopefully this will make sure we can render our map without it crashing no keep doing that okay yeah so it didn't render anything that's perfect that's exactly what we wanted that's exactly what we wanted. So it's not crashing. I think if I remove this, let's just try this before I end the video. If I remove this, it will be crashing right here. Try to render some shit that doesn't exist. Yeah, it crashed. Okay, good shit. So we know we're 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 in the clear here. We're in the clear. Because I just forgot where the hell I did that. So I'm screwed. Nope. There we go. Okay. There you go, guys and girls. I hope you I hope you followed me on that. While we have this as a pointer, because this is really gonna help out um with memory as well because we don't want empty tiles lying around we can have tile pointers pointing to null pointer then we can easily check if it's a null pointer if there is an actual tile there in that empty spot uh, if it is you know we'll just render it if it's not we won't do anything so that's going to help us with empty spots in our game where we don't have any tiles so uh so that's great there you go it's going to be nice all right guys and girls hope that was okay Thank you for sticking with me. Thanks for all the support. You guys are awesome. I'm so sorry for not answering all your questions on YouTube right now. I just have a lot of things going on. And I just wish I could just help all of you out properly. And there's a bunch of you in Discord that I can't really help. But hopefully, hopefully soon when I get some more time, I'll get to all of that. But thank you anyway for all the support. It really means a lot. And take care. Just keep working hard. And I'll see you guys and girls in the next one. All right. Bye-bye.